The ABC led that witch hunt against Cardinal George Pell that saw him serve 405 days in jail for child rapes he could not possibly have committed. Well, the High Court last month overturned his sentence, seven judges to zero. But today, the ABC and other media outlets had another chance of going for Pell, reporting previously sealed pages of the report of the Royal Commission of Child Sexual Abuse, pages about George Pell that had been withheld so, so he could get a fair trial, pages insisting that he knew about priests abusing children for decades and did nothing. First today, though, to the finding of the Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse, that George Pell knew of child sexual abuse in the Ballarat Diocese in the 1970s and 80s, and in particular that he knew why the now notorious pedophile priest, Gerald Ridsdale, was being moved from parish to parish. And there was a second major finding against Pell. Then in 1989... Pell was a bishop in Melbourne, already seen as a successor to his boss there, Archbishop Frank Little. The story is that Catholic school teachers and the head of the Catholic school sector told him that one priest, Peter Searson, was real trouble. He'd shown children a body in a coffin, he'd brandished a gun, made a girl take confession while seated between his legs, spent too long in the boys' toilets checking for graffiti, he claimed. Bad news. Now, Pell says not all the details were told to him, but he took the complaints to Little, Archbishop Little, who did nothing. He was the boss. The Royal Commission said Pell should have advised the Archbishop to remove Father Searson, and he did not do so. Now, I sat through George Pell's four days of testimony to this same Royal Commission in Rome four years ago. And as I said at the time, I was so struck by the hostility towards him. It was remarkable. It felt like you were at Salem. Yet the Catholic Church, let's be honest, it acted absolutely shamefully in hiding pedophile priests, particularly Bishop Ronald Malkerns in Ballarat, who covered up for the worst pedophile of all, Gerard Ridsdale. Gerald Ridsdale is now in jail, thank God. But in the evidence that I heard, there was no proof that Pell himself knew of priests abusing children and did nothing. This finding is merely the opinion of the Royal Commissioners who chose not to believe Pell's strong denials. Now, I do believe that Pell was naive and did not, as a young priest 40 or 50 years ago, pick up on hints that now, knowing so much more as we do, we would think he perhaps should have but I am struck by this fact, perspective. One of Ridsdale's victims in the area around Ballarat was the son of a police officer. Why didn't police charge Ridsdale? They were investigating him in 1975. Why didn't they charge him? And if all this foul sexual abuse was an open secret in the area at the time, where were the parents? Where were the journalists? Where were the community leaders? The academics? Where was the ABC? Why is Pell alone just the young priest at the time, the man being scapegoated? Now, I'm going to go through these two particular findings against Pell in some detail with my guests, but first let's hear from Cardinal Pell himself. When I asked him a month ago in our exclusive interview what he thought then that this Royal Commission would say about him now, he didn't predict today's findings... I'd be very surprised if there's any uh, bad findings against me at all. One important thing is that I left Ballarat in 84. Uh, Ridsdale, I think, I might be slightly wrong, was only sent overseas for treatment, which was when I suspected uh, just what was going on. Yes, and uh, he's done an immense amount of, uh, of harm. I, I finished in 84. There's a lot of the, lot of the drama still to run. Now, I also asked the Cardinal whether he'd known of pedophile priests in Ballarat and elsewhere at the time being protected by his church because it was a terrible scandal. Are you ashamed of your church, what it did? Yes, in some... Uh, I'm, uh, there are two, two levels. One is the, the crimes itself and then the, uh, the treating it uh, so inadequately for so long. You never looked back and thought... 
a whisper. I could have picked it up. Oh, well, I mean, obviously. Um, obviously, uh, yes, but... Uh, you would, but I mean, we're trained to think well of people, and I don't regret that. Uh, we're trained not to believe uh, gossip. What I can't get over is that one of the victims, I think it was of Ridsdale, yes. was the son of a policeman. Yes. And the police didn't act. Well, I mean, that, that wasn't uh, unusual. Often, the, the uh, often, sometimes, the police would work with the bishop to move the person on or to deal with it. You never knew of that happening at the time yourself? Not at the time, no. No, not at the time. It wasn't as though uh, we were alone in this. In a statement today, George Pell said he was very surprised by the Commission's findings, particularly surprised, in fact, and said they were not backed by the evidence to the Royal Commission. But to the specific allegations, joining me to discuss them is Peter Westmore, former head of the National Civic Council, a Catholic think tank. And Peter Westmore attended all of Cardinal Pell's trials and appeals and his evidence to the Royal Commission, followed it all very, very carefully. Peter, thank you so much indeed for your time. Let's go to the first allegation. In 1973, George Pell is just 30 years old, is one of the consultors or advisers to Bishop Mulkerns of Ballarat. Now, the Royal Commission says it does not believe Pell when he says that Mulkerns lied to him about just why Mulkerns was moving Ridsdale from parish to parish, that he lied and did not tell Pell or the other consultors that he was moving Ridsdale because he was abusing boys. The Commission says we do not accept that Bishop Mulkerns lied to his consultors. Now, my question to you is this. Why, why is the Royal Commission so sure that Mulkins would, of course, have told young Pell, already a church golden boy, by the way, I'm hiding a pedophile? Well, uh, Andrew, all that I'd say is there is no evidence to support the Royal Commission's conclusion. Um, I think that Royal Commissions have got very great powers, but they sh have to exercise those powers responsibly and unless there is very clear evidence of misconduct or lying, um, they should give the uh, evidence of people who voluntarily appeared before them, as Cardinal Pell did, treat that with respect. In fact, they did not do that. They simply assumed that he was guilty and it didn't matter what he said, they were going to find him guilty. But I don't get it in this particular case, right, because none of the consultants told the Royal Commission, yeah, 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 Mulkerns was run up to us, you know, he said, I'm hiding a pedophile, right. are you OK with yeah. that? Um, yeah. It seems to me bizarre when the Royal Commission says that Mulkerns lied about other stuff, why they would yeah. think that he would voluntarily tell his consultants, oh, by the way, you know, I am hiding a pedophile. Why would he do that? Why yeah. would he tell George yeah. Pell, who's just a 30-year-old priest? Yes, well... What you're saying is, is true, and I think the Royal Commission has assumed, influenced, in my view, by, no doubt, the contacts which they had with the Victoria Police and with some of the lawyers representing victims who clearly had it in for George Pell. They were influenced by them to believe that George Pell was just both a paedophile and a person who covered up for paedophiles. And what we see in these conclusions is exactly that. And that's the line that the ABC has consistently run, as well as the Fairfax media, against Cardinal Pell for years, and has created a very toxic environment in which it's impossible for a person in his position to get a fair hearing. But when you look now, at the evidence, it doesn't support that. No, I, I agree. Now. You can have your suspicions, I know, but I think the finding is just far too definitive on the evidence. The question is, well, uh, should Pell, who, let's stress, he was in charge of nothing, he didn't run anything, should Pell, well, he had minor duties, but not, not in control of, you know, who got fired and who didn't, should Pell have known or, or at least been more curious, you know, should he have picked up the whispers in the wind? Now, the Royal Commission does uh, say, say, yeah, he knew at the time that Gerald Risdale should not have taken boys on overnight camps because there might be gossip about 
this priest sexually abusing them. Do you think that Pell did know that, that Ridsdale was an abuser of boys and should have done more? There is... Cardinal Pell has consistently denied it. Other people who were members of that group of consultors with Cardinal Pell, with Father Pell as he was at the time, have denied that the bishop ever gave the true reason why Ridsdale was being moved from one parish to another. So when um, we now hear the Royal Commission saying that they are satisfied or they think that it is certain that, there is no evidence to support that. I've even seen, because it's been posted online, the minutes of these consultors' meetings at which it mentions that Ridsdale, by the way, along with half a dozen other priests, were being moved from one parish to another. Um, there is no evidence from the minutes of the meeting, from other people who are present at it, that the bishop gave any information as to why these particular movements were being made. Uh, and uh, I think that Cardinal Pell's assertions that he did not know are entirely credible. I think if I could make one other point, Andrew, um, and that is that at the relevant time, um, back in the early 19th, in the mid-1970s through to the early 1980s, he had nothing to do with the parishes in Ballarat. He was a lecturer at the Catholic Teachers College and later on he was the director of it. So his whole life was really in academia. It was not in the running of parishes in Ballarat. Now, the idea that he, a person who is disconnected with the parishes and whose role was simply on this group of consultants to advise the bishop on what was happening in Catholic education, specifically tertiary education, that he would have known about what Ridsdale was up to in a distant parish in the Diocese of Ballarat is, in my view, fanciful. Um, yeah, but also the, the Royal Commission, Peter, you know, in the absence of evidence, in fact, against the evidence, the sworn evidence of witnesses, that it says, yes. well, Mulkerns must have told you, but must have told them something highly improbable, volunteering that is yep. covering up for a criminal. I mean, seriously, yes. how yes. many people watching right now, if they were in that position, would be going to, to, to their colleagues saying, oh, by the way, did you know I'm moving this guy around because he's been abusing yes. sex, you know, boys and I don't want, and I want to hide that, and, but I'm not yes. going to hide that from you. I'm going to tell you. I mean, it just yes. doesn't pass... Unbelievable. The most basic, so it's just totally unbelievable. Uh, but so many journalists are reporting it as, oh, yeah, it must be. Now, the second main yeah. allegation, uh, Peter, is that years later, now, Pell by now is a bishop in Melbourne and already noted as the supposed successor of the archbishop there, Sir Frank Little. Mm -hmm. Sir Frank Little mm -hmm. is of the left and mm -hmm. Pell is being given the refrigerator treatment because he's a conservative. The Royal Commission said, as I said earlier, that Pell should have done more to get rid of a priest that was acting very strangely. He mm -hmm. should, uh, there was no firm evidence of sexual abuse, just suspicions. Mm -hmm. He should have advised the Archbishop to remove Father Searson and he did not do so. Is that a fair criticism? It's not a fair criticism because at the relevant time, firstly, we know from what Archbishop Pell said in his interview in Rome, which I also attended, that he did speak to the Archbishop about Father Searson. Um, similar concerns had been expressed by the Catholic Education Office, the director of it, uh, to the Archbishop. The Archbishop, who is the only person who could have removed Father Searson, did not do so. So in the responsibility for the Searson, Searson's remaining in that parish was entirely in the hands of the Archbishop. And it's very interesting that within a year of George Pell being appointed Archbishop of Melbourne, he had removed Searson. And uh, interestingly, Searson then appealed against his removal to the Vatican in Rome. The Vatican made a decision in Searson's favour. George Pell nonetheless refused to reinstate Searson. So, to me, the evidence on this is quite clear. George Pell is being pilloried for things which he did not do.
I think it's incredible. And I might uh, point out that when George Pell went to the uh, Archbishop and said, we've got a problem with this uh, Searson, it was after a meeting with four teachers that knew Searson and had gone to Pell with their complaints because other complaints mm -hmm. had gone nowhere. And the teachers told him, but give him another chance, don't move him. <laughs> and yeah. Really. Now, Pell's been hung for this. And by the way, yeah. the police were also investigating Searson that, and never proceeded with charges against him. Yeah. So, you know, why Pell is being singled out in this total mess just yeah. staggers me. Peter Westmore, thank you yeah. so much indeed for your time.